Cowabunga! So last night I saw the midnight showing of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And to be honest, I was actually pleasantly surprised that this film was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It actually exceeded my expectations, which were pretty fucking low, to be honest. For those of you who don't know, I love Ninja Turtles. I grew up on Ninja Turtles. Uh, moreover, I more so, I've been reading uh, Ninja Turtle comic books for quite some time. As you can see here, the original black and white, violent Ninja Turtle comics. Um, I had the whole collection of the comics. I've, I've just... I've always liked the the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics because they've been far more adult and mature than appealing to child child audiences. And this film um, is not a children's film, to be honest. I mean, this is more of adult. Uh, this is more of adult themed Ninja Turtles, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, this film does have its fun parts. It has some really cool moments, but overall, this isn't a fantastic film. It's a film that I'd I'd watch again. Um, I'm not sure if I'd buy it, uh, but in any case, um, it was it was fun. And so first things first is a acting, actresses. So Megan Fox is April O'Neil, which originally when I heard of this and saw the photos, I was like, oh my god, this is going to be another Transformers repeat. You have a sexy female fat material. Um, and actually, I can't believe I'm saying this, but April O'Neil's part, Megan Fox's act acting, act, uh, was actually not as bad as the Transformers film. Maybe it's because she wasn't used as a ma primary sex object where she had her tits hanging out and bent her ass over vehicles half the movie, like in Transformers, but her role as April O'Neil actually worked. She didn't... She was... Her acting, as as shocking as this is, is improved a bit. Like, it, it I... She wasn't unbearable like she was in the Transformers films or other movies that I've seen her in. Um, would I have chosen her to play April O'Neil? No. But she wasn't a terrible uh, April O'Neil, so that is right off the bat. It wasn't that bad, actually. It was it was bearable for me. Uh, second thing is the Ninja Turtles themselves. So they're about six to seven feet in height. They're really big Ninja Turtles, which is a little bit different from life-size Ninja Turtles, and they're extremely strong to where if they punch someone, guys go flying, which I, I have no problem with that. Um, I think the coolest thing about the Ninja Turtles, though, is how far motion capture has come because the Ninja Turtles motion capturing this was a motion captured film of them running around and doing things looks really realistic uh, especially when they're interacting even with other uh, actors and stuff um, because it's an actual person in a suit thing in which they have motion tracks so it all the real movements looked phenomenal like the motion tracking in this was fantastic it looked like real movements of the Ninja Turtles um, another thing is the trailer of the Ninja Turtles was really deceptive. There was a lot of people bitching and upset about the fact that Ninja Turtles had the Shredder being a white Caucasian, which was William F uh, Fletchner, Fletchner, I'm not sure how you say his name. Um, in the trailer, he's shown William Fletchner, Fletchner, as being the Shredder. Well, he's not the Shredder, to be honest. People were saying, we don't want a white Caucasian as a Shredder. He's a bad dude. But he doesn't play the Shredder. The, the guy who plays the Shredder, I don't even know his name, is actually uh, part Japanese or Korean or whatever. And the problem with Shredder in this film, as he's one of my favorite top comic villains of all time, is that he doesn't appear very evil. He didn't seem like an evil villain to me. And that's the biggest problem of this film, was that Shredder didn't feel like a real nemesis villain. He was cool. Um, his suit, as much as I thought about a robotic um, Shredder suit, it really wasn't his suit. It really wasn't that robotic. Um, it had some really cool features. His suit um, and the fight scenes between the Ninja Turtles and Shredder was, I think, badass. There's a few highlights of these scenes. Was um, the trailer showed uh, them like flying down like a mountain and like skiing down in Hummers and stuff. That looked really stupid in the trailer, but that was actually one of the coolest highlights of the film that I was really impressed by, and it was really fun and entertaining. This fun, I, this film I would call is stupid fun. So if you can correlate those two words to be stupid and fun, then you'll probably enjoy this. It wasn't really that bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible to where I would say, you know, this is shit, don't go see it. If you like the Ninja Turtles, you may like this. Um, I really like the dialogue between Michelangelo, 
Michelangelo, Donatello, Raphael, and Leonardo. The dialogue between all four of the Ninja Turtles was spot on. Um, that I can say. Um, they really captured the, each personality of the Ninja Turtle perfectly. And that's something that I really appreciated of this film. However, I must say that this film is very generic. It's very cliche. It's a typical... Like, the story's been done before. We know the story. It's very easy. It's understandable. Uh, I actually hope they make a second film, and I hope really Michael Bay isn't uh, behind it at all. Because I could certainly feel some of his vibe in this film. Not tremendously, but enough to know that Michael Bay was kind of, you know, around the production of this film. Another issue that I had with this film was Master Splinter. Uh, Master Splint Splinter was nothing like the previous... Master Splinter we know in the previous uh, Ninja Turtle films. I, I, I'm sorry that I keep going back to those, but I say this is because the original Ninja Turtle films, those are amazing to me. They are my top two, Secret of the Ooze and then Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I love those films. Um, and it, it's hard for me not to compare this film with those great films back then. And it really shouldn't be compared because they're completely different in a lot of different ways. But in any case, Master Splinter in this was really callous and cold. I didn't like that about him. He didn't really have... He wasn't like a chill Master Splinter where he, you know, teaches his son how to kick people's badass and kick butt. Rather, it was more of he's just really harsh on them, on the Ninja Turtles, and he wasn't... He didn't have the Master Splinter vibe of, you know, being this really fun teacher, and he, you know, is compassionate to an extent. Like, the first scene of Master Splinter you see is him beating the fuck out of the Ninja Turtles for... Uh, violating his order, and I mean, he's beating the fuck out of him. And I was just like, that's not the Master Splinter that I used to know. And then there was another particular scene where he's carrying around pizza, trying to get uh, the Ninja Turtles to um, explain the, what they did because they didn't want to tell him. And that, that was humorous, but for the most part, Master Splinter was just a cold-hearted bastard, which sounds weird to say, since that's not the Master Splinter that I know in the comics, much less even the older film. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I would say, go see this film. If you like the Ninja Turtles, you may... F I think you'll have the same opinion of me. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't incredible. But it wasn't shitty either. And, well, I enjoyed it. I just wish that Master Shredder was a lot more intimidating and scary like he was in the original 80s flick. Tomorrow will be the Wolf Among Us Let's Play that I've been procrastinating for quite some time. If you missed my video yesterday, it was The Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 4, which you guys have been requesting for quite some time. That is also uh, my previous video, which is linked in the annotation above this video right up there. Want to check that out? Feel free. My name is Daniel Solzbach, also known as Mr. Repsion. Peace to rep out and have a fantastic Friday. Cowabunga, dudes.